The way that I like to describe how to remember these equations is to really just kind of think about like really everything that we've learned from starting at trigonometry. So in chapter, um, if you guys recall, in chapter 3, we plotted points x, y. And then from that coordinate point x, y, we said, all right, can we evaluate the six trigonometric functions given those two points? And we said, yes. If we created a distance from the origin, and we called that r, hint, hint, r, right? Then we could create a right triangle, and we could say that's y and that's x. So therefore, we could find the value of r by doing the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which is our first equation up there for, our, for the class. Then we said, well, this angle is we're going to call this theta. And that means the tangent of theta is y over x. Right? This is from chapter 3, or chapter 4, section 3. Then we tried to make things a little bit easier. We said, all right, guys, that always works. We keep on doing cosines adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is opposite over adjacent. Let's try to simplify this. Rather than making r be any number, why don't we make r 1? So rather than doing adjacent over hypotenuse, if it's adjacent over 1, like if cosine is adjacent over r, um, if, if r is 1, then it's just the adjacent side, right? That's how we went into this discussion of, oh, this is cosine of theta, and this is sine of theta, right? And then we talked about the unit circle, because that, those are the points on the unit circle. And then we went through this whole idea of these points can, when r is 1, we can just think of x as the cosine of theta and y as the sine of theta. And we did this so often, some of you guys, when I say now, what is sine, you say y. And I say, what's cosine of theta? You say x. Yes, that's true when r is 1, right? right? But we did that so often for the unit circle, some of you guys just like now totally forgot that sine is still opposite over hypotenuse, right? But we did this to understand um, our unit circle, to make things easier for ourselves, OK? And also, remember, this was helpful. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, right? For before, you can see that. But now, let's kind of go back to r being any number. Like, let's just let's go back to r. Well, going back to our Pythagorean identities, guys, or sorry, our trigonometric ratios, cosine of theta is x over r. Sine of theta is y over r. So therefore, if you multiply by r on both sides, x equals r cosine of theta, y equals r sine of theta. And no way. Those are the other two equations. Now again, let's kind of see if that like, makes sense at all. Like here, these two equations, right? And again, remember we did this on the r. Oh, I erased it. I always erase it. Um, on the initial problem, here's the value, right? Remember, there's a point on the unit circle. But if I have 1 where r is 2, what did I multiply that by? What did I multiply that coordinate point by? 2, right? So it's just double what that cosine available angle is or the sine of the angle. So as long as you're not distracted by your phone, you can understand that and see how that comes away from there. Yes? No? OK, so they're not crazy equations. They're all from stuff you know from here. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use those equations to understand different representations of or converting between the rectangular and polar, as well as different representations. OK? So to understand, though, that we have to understand one more thing, which is referring to a vector.